Our second lesson is taken from the book of Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I have called my son. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed to the Baals. They burned incense to carved images. I taught Ephraim to walk, taking him to their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I drew them with gentle cords, with bands of love. I was like to them as those who take the yoke from off of their neck. I stooped and fed them. You shall not return to the land of Egypt, but the Assyrians shall be your king, because they refused to repent. And the sword shall be in its sash in their cities. Amen. And the final lesson is from the Arcana Celestia, portion of number 1,411 and 1,414. These passages are explanations in the internal sense or the meaning of the following words which come from Genesis. And Jehovah said to Abram, Get thee out of thy land and from thy birth and from thy father's house to the land that I will cause thee to see. And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and your name shall be great and you shall be a blessing. Because the words here are about the Lord and they contain more arcana or secrets than anyone can possibly conceive or make known. For here, in the internal sense, is meant the the Lord's first state after he was born. Because that state was a very deep secret, Any intelligible explanation of it is hardly possible. Let it be said simply that he was like any other human being except that he was conceived from Jehovah, yet born of a woman who was a virgin, and that by birth from that virgin he took on all the weaknesses that are common to all. These weaknesses are bodily, and are referred to in this verse in that he was to depart from them in order that celestial and spiritual things might be brought into view for him. There are two heredities that are born together with everyone, one from the father and the other from the mother. The Lord's heredity from the father was divine, but that from the mother was human and weak. This weak humanity that a person derives from, by heredity, from their mother is something bodily, which is dispelled when the person is being regenerated. The Lord was called away to depart from these external things so that they would not get in the way or cause disturbance. Amen. Here and pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Are you taxed? Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? The Christmas story is filled with various aspects of human life that we all go through. The decree that was sent out from the government that made Mary and Joseph go up from or to travel from their homeland to Jerusalem. There was a travel south. We think of it as being up because they ended up higher in elevation in the city of Bethlehem. This universal taxation that happened all over the world, of course, all over the Roman world, or what we know of where the government was sending out that decree, 
it took place as a kind of representation in our own spiritual lives of being judged or a judgment taking place in our lives. We, we need to register, we need to meditate, we need to reflect upon what it is going on in our lives that we're giving attention to, that we're making a priority out of, a taxation or a registration, a counting up, taking account. It's an important thing and it's an important part of the Christmas story. The city of David in the Word represents our thoughts concerning who the Lord is as, as a, a doctrinal structure, as a, as a, a way of, of uh, putting all together in one place. What do we believe about the Lord? We need to go to that city. We need to look and examine what it is that the Lord means to us. Cities represent structure, security. They represent a system that's put in place. So the holy city, New Jerusalem, stands for the system of ideas that are heavenly of the new church. So it has walls and foundations. It has doors. The city of David and this story represents also what are we thinking, how are we approaching the Lord? Who is the Lord to us? The city of David, the house of bread, is what the name means. How are we fed? By the way we understand and by the way we approach the Lord. No story about Christmas in the new church is, is about one advent. We... we Think about, we have the idea concerning the Lord and these stories from the New Testament. We always think about them. We can't help but think about them in light of what we know of the second coming and the teachings about who Jesus was. So for Mary and Joseph to be called out of their home to a new place reminds us of Abram the first of the patriarchs called out of his home, the land of his father and mother, to go to a new land which the Lord would show him, where he would have a covenant with the Lord, and where Abram would become a great and powerful nation. He's representative, Abram, Abraham, of the Lord, and what the Lord is going to do in establishing his kingdom. We get called away. We get called out. We get called to. There are lots of different things that call. One of the things we reflect upon during the Christmas story is, is all the various people that were told to do something, given a decree, commanded. From Abraham's call all the way through the stories of the Old Testament, each of them is an integral part of the Lord's own elevation from lower things to higher things. An elevation of the divine, leaving the things of the merry human, of the infirm human nature, and becoming more and more divine. And it's a reflection for all of us concerning the way the Lord calls us from a natural life into a spiritual life. And that passage, 1411, where it says, the Lord's called out of these things so they don't distract him or cause a disturbance. Oftentimes Christmas, for many people, is so distracting. I mean, we want to celebrate, right? We, we want to rejoice that the Lord's been born in the world and the Lord is to be born in our hearts. Would that the whole world has that peace of God goodwill towards everyone. But for so many people, they're so distracted. We need to be called out, don't we, of, of that kind of external distraction, which is represented by Abram's first call away from his homeland. There are so many different moods or emotional states. Spiritual spiritually inclined, or simply just natural emotional states that we find ourselves going through around Christmas time. Maybe right now things are going great for you. Yeah, there's a pandemic, but more or less everything's wonderful. That'd be great. If that's the case for you, good. You can think about the contentment that 
Elizabeth had with Zechariah. Things seem to be going pretty well in their lives. We think about so many different stories in the Word where things seem to be going pretty well. Everybody's at peace in their home and they're living contentedly under their vine or their fig tree. We might feel like we have pretty good control over our lives and and that things are are pretty well uh, keeping us content. But there are other times when things are not so great, aren't there? Maybe you're having a harder time than usual right now. And maybe that's because of the things going on with the pandemic. Maybe it's for completely different reasons. Maybe it's things you're going through in a relationship that you're having or with things going on at work with family. Things that are unforeseen come upon us and can shake us from our contented lot, our contented life. Things come up that are just connected with the state of life that we're in. And now, at Christmas time, those kinds of things can can seem worse than ever because we all want to be in the Christmas mood and have Christmas cheer and, oh, we put on a happy face because it's Christmas time. And yet, somewhere in our hearts, we're not having all that great stuff happening for us that would make us really happy. Most often, we fluctuate between really good times and not so great times. Christmas is a story about hope, isn't it? All of the Old Testament is giving statements of hope to a time when a Messiah, a Savior, would come. And people had pretty much given up hope by the time the story or the lesson that from Hosea uh, that I read came up. Uh, years had passed before, when nobody saw much action from the Lord. Things weren't wonderful. There was captivity. There was return to the Holy Land. There was slavery. There were things going on with, with the, the children of Israel. That It was not a happy time. But the Lord speaks and says, I've loved you. Out of Egypt I call my son. Now that's a prophecy of the Lord himself having to leave the Holy Land because of a decree that went out from Herod to kill all the children in Bethlehem two years and younger when he realized that wise men had not returned to him with news of where Jesus had been born. So, in order to avoid that, the Lord gave Joseph and Mary the message to go to Egypt and then, as it said, out of Egypt I have called my son. A decree. Joseph was told by the angel, now it's safe to return to your, your homeland. All of the Old Testament were these decrees, were these orders, were these statements of people being called from one state into another. Always to give us a sense that there's hope. There is salvation. No matter what state we're in, no matter what state we're in, we're told the Lord can always call us out of that state and redeem us and save us. The Lord's much greater and stronger than, than we are. Things in the natural world, things that seem to have natural power, things represented by the sword and the shield and the helmet of the earthly governors, are not anything compared to the sword of the Lord's truth that's represented on the altar behind me. So we go back to the stories of the Word, the Christmas story, and we see these, these range of emotions that take place. And perhaps you can relate to one or more of them. As I mentioned before, sometimes our lives are just carrying on in fairly predictable manners. Like Elizabeth and Zachariah it said that they, they were living content in God. They were both righteous before God and all the commandments and ordinances. And they walked before the Lord blameless. Sounds pretty good. However, even in that contented life, there were states of discouragement because it said that Elizabeth and Zacharias longed for a child, and now in their old age, they had pretty much given up hope. 
They had no child, and then the Lord came and told them that they would conceive. So powerful was that kind of a statement that we know the Lord struck Zacharias so he couldn't speak, he was dumb, so he couldn't talk, to let him know this truly is a miracle. And when the time comes to name the child, name him John, not Zacharias after yourself. So the Lord came in that contented state, although there was this little bit of what was not so great, and relieved Elizabeth and Zacharias of their hopelessness when they were, gave birth to their son John. There are times in our lives when things are worse than discouraged, though, right? When, when we're just downright depressed, uh, miserably sad. And it's times like this, we, we oftentimes think, well, we'll, we'll, we'll struggle and we'll white-knuckle it, we'll make it through. Um, we need to know that there's help if we are really struggling with depression. That there are people to talk to, pastors, teachers, counselors, Herod the king always shows up at Christmas. And there are things that are beyond our power to control. Beyond our power to control. And we have to recognize that oftentimes during Christmas, during this season, when the sparkle and glitter and the happiness all around us is, is out there and the lights are turned on and things are glittering, it's wonderful, and yet it may not be a very good reflection of what we're actually feeling inside. We might feel that Herod's come in, take over, and just killing things, newborn things, good things, precious new states. Every gentle thought we might have seems to be overwhelmed with a dark cloud. So there are times when that sense of the power of the earth and the power of the worldly and bodily things in our lives are certainly in the way and a distraction. And although we wish we could overcome all things with prayer and fasting, a lot of times counseling and medication are what we really need. And there's no shame, there's no fault, there's no sense that, oh well, you're not as good as somebody else if you can white knuckle it through. No, with the things that are going on in our world and the things that are going on with our bodies and the things that are going on around us, we need help. We need help that wasn't available lots of times to people before us. Joseph was warned in a dream that King Herod was after him, and so he went and he fled with Mary and Jesus to Egypt until it was safe for them to reappear. And so there are times in our lives when we have to listen to the help that we're getting and flee, leave, exit because things are too overwhelming for us to handle. As magnificent and wonderful as Joseph was, from all we can tell, he couldn't have handled the onslaught that took place in Bethlehem that was the killing of the children at that time that were under the age of two. So it's a representation of those things in our lives that are overwhelmingly powerful. The Lord sends us a way to get help we have to listen and take advantage of that. So many other important emotions are displayed in the Christmas story. There's, there's that, that warmth of friendship that you see displayed between Elizabeth and Mary. These cousins, who knows when they had seen each other before, but now Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. She's great with child. And the wonderful stories... Uh, the words that are depicted in both from Elizabeth, you know, why has the mother of my Lord come to visit me? And Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. These, these beautiful passages that are, are filled with warmth and love concerning connection and, again, hope <clears throat> and the fulfillment of prophecy, the fulfillment of things that we long for in our life. At the same time, there's some pretty cold things mentioned already with Herod, but the coldness of Joseph and Mary not being able to find a place to, to have a child. And for good reasons, again, prophetically, to fulfill the prophecy. The Lord, it says, could have been born in a great palace, but because our own state needs the Lord, when our own state is cold, and when things are bitter, when things aren't going well, the Lord will come into that state. There's Obviously, the states of rejoicing that are over and over again part of the Christmas story, aren't they? 
the angel appearing to the shepherds, the star appearing to the wise men, when they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, when they saw that star again, which had disappeared and then reappeared and led them to come to the house, the place where the star was right above. And there are these deep emotions of, of highs and lows, but also let's reflect upon reflection and meditation. Mary pondered all these things, kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Remember when Simeon held up the child Jesus when he was being circumcised and spoke these words and said to Mary, you know, a sword's going to pierce your own heart. Mary kept all these words and pondered them. And it said in another place that she reflected upon these things deeply. We need to turn aside from all the distraction and take time to ponder the Lord's birth in our lives, to ponder our own state and see where we need to go to find the Lord's help, where we need to go to find help when the states are low and we do feel attacked, under siege. When Gabriel first appeared to Mary and said, you're going to have a child, <laughs> rejoice, highly favored one, she says, how can this be as I do not know a man? That, that element of the impossible taking place, that it's not an element of surprise or an emotion of surprise, but pretty much, yeah, wow, really? And the Lord's coming to us and saying, I can take your life and make it something completely different. Really? Mary didn't resist and say, I like my life the way it is. Thank you very much. Behold your handmaid, she said. Be it to me according to your word. There's a longing that is represented by Mary. And we're told in the word, in the Christmas story, but throughout the word, that all the women of the word represent in various ways affections or desires or longing for the truth. Mary represents an innocent desire. She was a virgin. She had known no man. She represents that innocent, urgent desire to be receiving the Lord's truth. How can this be? I do not know a man. She represents a craving, a passion even, that we must also have in facing the various states of the Christmas celebration, the Christmas time, a passion to re-examine, to be registered or taxed, to be looking at what it is we need to go back to or find again. And it's not going to be an earthly thing that's going to bring the Lord back into our lives. It's going to be something spiritual from the Lord. Yes, it can appear to be our own in many ways because we know these, these stories so well. But the Lord will constantly give us the Holy Spirit, constantly give us the affection and desire to seek Him anew. If we're open to that and desire that. There are so many different emotions, so many different states up and down, so many different uh, ways of looking at the Christmas story for ourselves. We, we, we need to stop and reflect on what state we're in. We're being taxed. We're being registered. It stands for a time to reflect and see what are our priorities? What's most important? Who are we? And where is the Lord in our lives? Are we advancing towards the city of David, the holy city, New Jerusalem? And do we have that longing to place ourselves in the Lord's trust? And do we have that amazement that the Lord, that acceptance that the Holy Spirit will change our lives? How can this be? I do not know a man. Mary is saying... And this statement is saying, it's not about what we already have in the natural world, the conjunctions that we have with things that are like what we already have. The Lord says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. There's something new that can only come from the divine that regenerates us, that revives us, that gives us the ability to overcome the external things represented by Abram being called out of his homeland, the things that are distracting, the things that are disturbing, the things during the Christmas season that are like Herod. 
the Lord can draw us out. And the Lord said to Mary, with God all things are possible. Amen.